Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much for joining me for a cup of tea. Thanks for having would, me. Would you like some? Yes, please. Um, so we're here in Salzburg uh, for the ISC meeting, obviously. Um, first of all, is there anything that you've seen while at the ISC meeting that you've that's really triggered you or given you some inspiration or a spark of creativity? Oh, it's, uh, there's, there's quite a few of the little things. Yeah. I haven't seen anything that's, say, like... Groundbreaking. Revolutionary. Right. Because uh, uh, you, if you say this, like, come up with a revolution, we haven't seen that, I think, this mm. week. But quite a few nice, good presentations, enough mm. to make you think in, 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 in how to progress yourself. Mm. So it's good, but it is not great yet. Not, not yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what, and what, what has been the main topics of the, of the presentations or posters that your group have been doing here? Well, we're a bit diverse here, but one thing we're focusing very strongly on is on, on two-dimensional chromatography. Right. But then what is happening in between is what we are discussing a lot with different people this week, and that, that, that helps mm. uh, because we, we are concentrating there with Anna. Calls it now, she calls it one and a half dimensional chromatography. What one and does. a half dimensions, right. So it's like two dimensional, leaving out the second dimension. Uh, right. So you have the first dimension and then you have the modulator that, that normally gets into the second dimension, but she leaves out the second dimension. And, and she manages to get the texture limits down. So it's, it's a useful exercise. Hmm. And, and if she, now she's got good results, so it was a good. And how has the, the reaction been from other people? Well, we're discussing on, on, on what the best way is to do things and how useful it is. And yeah. you know Monica did one, I'm sure. I know, and yeah. So Monica's trying to figure out how best to use it or not use it. So it, that's, that makes it very exciting for us because a lot of the discussion centers about the work that, that we are interested in presenting. So yeah. that helps. You know, it's close to home. But also uh, we have one young guy, Michael, and he's, he's a chemometrician. So this is a completely different angle. Very different angle, yeah. Talks a lot about it. He, he was doing a, a poster just now with uh, quite a bit of discussion on it, and people saying maybe this should be slightly different. So it's good. And I think it's a very good crowd here. It's, it's, it's a very good level of discussion. So if, if you say what's, what is striking me most, it's not like individual presentations, but it's the hours that we spend in the breaks and discussions. and. Mm. It's quite hectic, you see me busy. But well, I tried to catch you all week and you're always you, you, talking to you, someone, in di usually in deep discussion. Yeah, but you, you see, that yeah. that's exactly what I said. That's a, probably the, the single best aspect of this meeting, hmm. that it is really inviting people to discuss. Sometimes you get difficult questions, <laughs> nagging questions, but it's... Have you had any difficult questions? Yes, and I've asked people to send, send me some follow-up papers so that I can really try and understand what it is about. Yeah. Because uh, it's not always easy to just no. bring the whole point across in a few words. And it is still, it's fantastic that everybody speaks English, but it's still for most of us, not for you, but most of us is secondary well, yeah. language. I, feel, I sometimes feel embarrassed that I'm, I'm, I have the easy job of just mm -hmm. speaking in my native yeah. language all of the time at these meetings. Just like drinking tea is for foreigners. So. <laughs> So we, I know we, we did have a small chance to, to catch up before and I know you have often have an eye on some of the, the sort of bigger issues, not necessarily in, even necessarily just in the analytical space, but more widely we, we were discussing the very competitive mm. nature of science now. I wonder if you could share some of your thoughts on that topic. Yeah, we, we had a, a, a brief chat this week because you meet people, you also hear that they, we, we all, Unless maybe some of the most brilliant people, but all of us get rejected for grants. Uh, so you do an awful lot of work. Mm. And, and you think you write the best proposal and you still don't get it. And, and especially for the young people, uh, if you haven't made a good name for yourself, it's even more difficult. Right. And in some countries it's more difficult than others. But we were talking this week that it's like professional sports. Right. And, uh, and you, you try to get into the team, uh, but you get rejected all the time, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's, it's pretty harsh, it, it, it's like that. The, the selection mechanism is, is close to being in the team or not being in the team. Yeah. Uh, but it lasts longer, because if you're a, a football player, maybe 10 years, sure. and a scientist, maybe 40 years in your career. And, and do you think that's more of a problem nowadays, uh, in terms of 
do you think there's even more competition or more emphasis on on the money side of things than, for example, obviously it's always a competitive mm -hmm. field, but do you think things have changed a little bit that make it even more difficult nowadays? I do think we are even more com uh, competitive now than we were. No, well, maybe maybe more than ten years ago. But if you say like in the previous century, there was a, a solid stream of money for research, mm. and in some countries like France, that's still the case. Many researchers have a right to exist on a kind of permanent basis. But that that's that's all of society, and certainly science. Everything seems to be temporary now, mm. and it means that. If young scientists have to make their own money, or falter, or try to find a completely different job, that's, that's quite harsh. Mm. And and I, yeah, I do think it's much more difficult now than it used to be. I'm not sure that there is less total money, but I think it is. It is you, you have to get it yourself, and you don't get so much help. So for young scientists, I think it's it's quite challenging. Mm. And any. Any things that we can do to improve that situation, do you think? Yeah, well, we, who is we, right? I think one of the things that, that, that strikes me when I'm meeting like this is one difference between the soccer players and uh, people here is you can help each other and, and, and be helped mm. because in, in a soccer team, it's only competition to try and get into the team and the players from different teams are not going to help you. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and here, Exactly, the players from completely different teams are helping you. Here you can, there was one student that was, uh, that somebody, another student that was a postdoc from Turkey came up to Emily and me. Mm. And she got instant help from two sides of the world. Uh, and, and, and she's welcome to, she, she, she doesn't get a grant herself because she has already been in Germany for a while. But she can send one of her people either to Australia or to Amsterdam. So, so I think the best, thing we can do to help young people is help each other and help with, with uh, scientists that are around. And then meetings like this are fantastic, aren't right. they? I mean, people come up to you and say, is there anything you can help me with? So if, if, if there's an advice for young people writing grants, it's go to meetings like this and, right. and, and reflect on your ideas. And of course, you don't want to give them away, but you can bounce some of your thoughts off. Sure. And, you, you know how many nice people there are around. So, other than a soccer player, you can find coaches from all over the world. That's true. Right. Yeah. It's an open environment in some ways. In terms of um, looking at the next five years or so, what do you think are the, the main, I guess, analytical or separation issues that need to be sort of addressed more more effectively? Are there any areas that aren't getting enough attention or that need to be brought back into the spotlight? Well, one, one, one area that, that I think will, be, will still be very hot for everyone, but there's an area where the boundary between liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry, that's, that's like, it's not a war zone, but that's mm. where a lot is happening. Yeah. And the question is how much chromatography do you need or how much separations do you need? Or the other way to put it maybe is that if you do separations and mass spectrometry, can't you do a lot more than with, the, with either of the two techniques together? And if you really use the best combination, if you use both of them in the best possible way, can you get further than you were before? Right. But on that line, there is a, there's a lot of discussion going on. This field is changing a lot. And one reason is mass spec has gotten an awful lot better. In, in, say the last 10 years. Yeah. But that also is the challenge for separations people to say if the mass spec is so good then we have to do more to make the whole system work better and make everything work better. Right. And and that's you know and exactly what I shouldn't was talking about today is like we have very good mass spectrometer but we can still use other technology to gain an order of magnitude in your detectability. Right so it's about not just advancing one side of the equation but you know putting effort and thought into both sides yeah maybe in, 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 in a good modern world it's a synergy you know, mm -hmm. two fields that are developing yeah but you really have to get together and look at each other very carefully to see whether there's more synergy from the two fields well, that was one of the focuses when you did you know when you chaired the HPLC meeting I know you mm -hmm. had a big emphasis on that yeah. you know, LCMS side of things yeah 
Mm. So, so I, uh, I think this is one of the areas where things will be developing. And we challenged the separation scientists are challenged to say like we we still have a big role to play if if we show something smart. Right. And probably a final question for you: What over for your particular group or your your particular field? Is there somewhere you you want to get to? You know, what are your kind of future aspirations over the next mm -hmm. five years? Have you got certain objectives that you want to meet, or just you know push the field in a in a different direction? No, we got this. We got the one big jump on the drawing board. Mm. That is that because we're now talking about with, with LCU, we can have peak capacities up to about a thousand, and it takes a day mm. you know, or six hours maybe, and a few thousand in our two-dimensional technology. But somehow I still believe that if we can do a three-dimensional separation, not with columns, but in a block, we can get to peak capacities in the hundreds of thousands and, right. and, and to a million. And this is what still some of the big challenges are. The, the proteomics people keep saying that that's what they need. Right. And uh, if you have 50,000 proteins in a sample and you believe Cal Gillings, who says that then you need about 50 times as many uh, as high a peak capacity as you have peaks there, yeah. then even the one million is not quite enough. But we we need to get to very high separation uh, powers. And if I can see that in the rest of my career, there will be... Well, I saw a sneak preview of that three-dimensional mm -hmm. ship. This is, this is the concept. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's quite an amazing kind of surge forward, right? If, mm -hmm. if, if that can... There will be a jump. Yeah, that would be a big, a big yeah. jump. And, and slowly some people are trying to say, okay, so we know what it's about. I don't think we can do it alone. If more people believe in this, we have a better chance that, uh, that we make this kind of thing happen in the next 10 years. Sure. Well, that's exciting stuff. And thank you very much for joining me, Peter. Thank it's you. been a pleasure to see you again, as always. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll catch up at the party later, I hope. And uh, in the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll top up your cup. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much again.